What's going on guys? We are here today in Birmingham, England at the Bullring Market uh, for another installment of More Than a Market. This time I'm with my buddy Vincenzo Massoni and excited guys. We're going to introduce him to market life. <laughs> um, I have no idea what's in there. I haven't taken a look at all. We just got here. So let's go see what they got. Let's do it. You know how I know these eggs are good? Those feathers still stuck to them. <laughs> yeah. um, I, one thing I always notice every time I go to Europe, the eggs are always better. Like the yolks are really, really dark orange. Yeah. And I, I, I as always, I'm just surrounded by food that I can't eat because I have no place to prepare it, which, which sucks. It's like a tease. Total tease. So this is what we call an, we call them jumbo. Now these are an extra large egg, mm -hmm. okay? And you've got two yellows in Oh, there. yeah. Happy hens. Yeah, 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 yeah. Two yellows. And the Chinese, who cook, we get a lot of Chinese customers, the high Chinese community in the Birmingham city centre, the and they say, if you get two yellows, a good omen. And they're very, very happy if they get two yellows. Huh. But you, but you knew that was going to be? Yeah. But how? The size of the egg. Ah. In, in the UK. But I've seen eggs bigger than that, and I, I don't necessarily get it's the to. Weight, the weight of an egg determines the category. Ah. In the UK, you've got three sizes of egg. You've got medium, mm -hmm. large, and extra large. And they should be sold by weight. Ah, uh, but sometimes they're, they're sold more by the size. If, if you go into some supermarkets, it will say on the box in tiny writing, mixed weight. So you think, oh, these look big. And then you open the box, and you've got bigger eggs, and then you will get some smaller ones. But the weight of the egg determines the size, and that is two yellows. Okay? That is excellent. Cassava root. That's actually where tapioca comes from. The starch from this makes tapioca. And then we use the tapioca to use the to get the dextrose for animal meal factoid <laughs> it's like greg valentino <laughs> what's what's that potato <laughs> potato right those carrots are so big. This one? Yeah. This one is small today. If you see other small? Things, it's bigger than this. One. Yeah? Yeah. Everything, you know. The carrots, the carrots came from the gym. The carrots. <laughs> the carrot is always here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's this here? Yum. This a yam? That's the yam. In this in this one? Yam. Another yam. Yeah, it's wow. Yam, it's different, different taste. They're sweet or no? Ah, this one is sweet. It's normal yam. Yeah. Huh. It's like sweet potato and bacon potato. It's the same. Oh, okay. It, it, it comes from here or no? No, no, no. That's from Jamaica. From Jamaica? Yeah. Huh. It's from uh, Brazil. Brazil. Yeah, that's from Ghana. Ghana. Wow. But they all same yam. But it's different, different taste. Some sweet, some... Hmm. Interesting. Uh, thank you. But is, if you support to eat that one, you make more muscle. Yeah, it'll make, it'll make me bigger. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> we'll take 20. It's definitely great, man. I'm definitely uh, very grateful to be here. Now we're going to go check out the fish market. I've been looking forward to this. It's a big fish eater. It looks tasty. Let's get some. These chickens here look great. I mean, they still got the feet on, the heads on. Um, you can tell they're not really big. They're not overgrown, so they're probably nice and tender. Um, probably closer to how a chicken is supposed to look and taste. <laughs> yeah. You can see, too, there's a lot of, you know, uh, cow's feet and pig's feet and chicken feet, um, which as I understand it, 
I've never had them myself, but I know people like to eat them um, for the taste. But I know also too, it's probably very high in collagen, which, you know, as a sole protein source, might not be the greatest for bodybuilding, but combined with, with meat, um, you get a really great nutrition uh, in amino acid profile. Plus, you know, collagen is really what's starting to kind of get its, its, its uh, due respect. Because I mean, you, you need it for, you know, keeping your, your joints strong and uh, it's great for your skin. So, you know, is, you know, a lot of times we're just eating lean tissue, you know, chicken breast, uh, lean steak, and you're not getting a ton of collagen in your diet. So it might be something for us to reconsider. You know, should we, when we eat a chicken, should we be eating more of the, you know, if you're eating thighs and legs and stuff, a lot of times, you know, you kind of, at least, well, I do anyways, I'll bite the ends off the bones and <laughs> eat the cartilage and all that. And it's probably really good for your body um, for, you know, healing and recovery. But, it, you know, just, I guess, food for, literally, food for thought. This is a, a vegan's worst nightmare. <laughs> well, I figured we'd come over here and check out the market. Some nice looking stuff. What do people do with the heads of the pigs? Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. It's good. Good meat there. Good meat. Yep. Oh, that's been dry aged? Yeah. yeah. I was watching in the back the guy cutting the beef, and it was insane. He was getting, he had the frozen beef, like, um, you know, I guess how they, like, it's a square, and he was cutting it in the forest. And the, he was getting like this close to the blade, his thumbs, and he was just like doing it like it's nothing. It just goes to show you, practice makes perfect, guys. It was, it was pretty intense. I couldn't stop watching. If we could find an English fishmonger, ask about some fish and chips and cod and how that became the national dish, you know, maybe there's some some greater significance behind that. Would you be able to tell us how fish and chips became the national dish? W would you happen to know uh, how or why cod and fish and chips became such a popular dish? We've been asking people how how fish and chips became the official I know, yeah, dish. It's mad, isn't it? yeah. How did how did fish and chips become the national Dish. Because we're all gluttons. <laughs> What's because you're gluttons? <laughs> it's just, I think it was because of the coast. It was so close to the coast. Right, right. And it went, it's when we started in like London and a place like that, and it just right. branched around. Because it? yeah. it's good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> it all depends on where you are, really, isn't it? I don't really know how it started, but it is, it is one of the traditional foods, yeah? Mm hmm, mm hmm. Look, they got, oyster, they got oysters, a buck ten each, all opened. You gonna have some with me? I never had an oyster before. But I'll eat one with him right now. <laughs> You've never had one? No, man. It's just oh, like is, the, this, the, the look of it, oh, the this texture. Is good. This is good. We're out and exploring the world. and It's the time to do it. Becoming more worldly. Oh, okay, good. we got to do it. So he's got fresh oysters here. And um, you can buy them opened, which is cool because I don't have a knife to open them with. Um, and I figured we could get Vincenzo to try them. Now, I, I love raw oysters. And uh, from a nutritional perspective, very good for you. Very high, very rich in minerals. Um, also, I, I think, don't quote me, but B vitamins, I could be confusing them with clams, but I do believe they are very good for you and the tastes are just unbelievable. They look fucking disgusting. Would you mind if I get a picture? Here we go. Here we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It wasn't as bad. I just, I just taste the salt water right now. All right, so we're just wrapping things up at the Bull Ring Market here in Birmingham. With a really good time. I mean, the people are just so hospitable and friendly and polite. Um, one of the things I always like most about England in general. Um, the outdoor portion, you know, where all the produce was and eggs and things like that. Um, it was cool. We got to see some, some different stuff. We had a really awesome conversation with the woman about eggs. Um, she couldn't have been nicer. Uh, inside, you know, with the meat and the fish, um, we got to hear, I think, a few different theories as to why 
uh, you know, fish and chips is kind of the national dish. Everything from it's a, you know, a Catholic thing, you know, eating fish on Fridays to the proximity to the water to it being introduced by the Greeks. Uh, we got to have some awesome fresh oysters. Vincenzo had them for the first time. <laughs> I'm going to continue eating them. I don't look like him, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and overall, it was just an awesome experience. Um, you know, it's always nice to meet different people, have a conversation, uh, especially when food is the backdrop. Um, what do you think? You know, he, he, Evan couldn't have said it any better. Um, this is my first time at, you know, well, second time at a market internationally. Um, first time with someone who kind of knows a lot about food. So, you know, just the conversations. Um, definitely trying oysters was a big highlight of my day. Um, it was just an all around great experience and I'm really thankful for it. Um, the, the people's manners, like Evan said, uh, the guy wanted to treat us for the oysters. You know, obviously Evan wouldn't let that happen, but just, just the thought and things like that. People in England, great people, great time. Yeah. Let's go have lunch. Yeah, I agree.